Hello, uh, let's talk about didactic communication. Didactic communication, uh, I should say that when we talk about didactic communication, we are talking about communicate to teach. And the question is, how do we memorize? How do we learn? And how shall we teach according to, of course? I in the, let's say, according to physiological and psychological uh, uh, point of view, we memorize like this. It's like you have a huge screen in front of you and everything is, shall I say, playing. Up till one moment that a click will appear and means that it's important for you. And as much as it is important start recording up till one moment you say oh, it's no good you erase it or it is very important and you have to memorize not only in the working memory but as well as in a long-term memory and in a long-term memory you make a metacognition process and integrating that new information you are receiving according to all the information you have and you will reorganize your memory and you can let's say have two types of information one is emotional information you memorize in one side of your brain or is a logical information you memorize in other side of your brain but this is not all because during seven decades we have studied the learning styles. Gardner started to make it in the 80s and he found out that we have different types of learning, understanding process through different multimodal channels. Fleming systematized that in the VARC model and Antonio Damasio and Joan Stiles have made their research about the different areas of the brain in order to find which area will memorize each thing using a different tool. Since the 80, 18th century, research has been done about identifying brain areas for memorizing things. Brodimen, in the beginning of the 20th century, as well made his research, but the tools were not good enough to identify properly it. Only in the 90s, Antonio Damasio identified different brain areas for understanding things and adjusted to each channel, let's say audio, video, speaking and different things, different areas. This is not so important we go into it deeply just to have you for you to have an idea about how does it this and the learning communication tools are by speaking or listening by viewing by reading or writing and by kinetic activities we can say and these figures are not let's say 100 percent but in average it's about this we can learn from 10% from what we read, 20% from what we listen, and 20% from what we see. This means that we can learn no more in a better conditions, about 50% of what is the contents. And this is what we teach, let's say, it's a behaviorage approach and we teach not using when we see we see not only images videos but we see as well non-verbal communication which we make with our eyes with our hands with our body language and things like this but for we learn we learn it's let's say a constructivist approach and we learn from when we are saying, because our brain is organizing the information, or when we are teaching, because we have to organize all everything in all details to teach and to try to make ourselves understanding. 
this is the process and this is important for us to know how does it works the question is are the learning styles profiles standard and static I should say that it changes according to learning profile and the moment of the learning you are in the cycle of learning and scientific areas you are working in this is what research points out and emphasizes the different aspects let us see a small detail about this labor in his research in he points out that 60% 65% are mainly visuals 30% are auditory learners and 5% are kinetic learners but Fleming complement this information saying more than 60% of us exhibit multimodal preferences preferences this means that we don't learn only with one channel we use different channels and they should be synchronous for we make a synergetic effect of understanding and learning it means that according to the standards we have let's say 20% of listening 20% of viewing and 10% of reading but if you are an auditory preference in your learning process your capacity of learning by listening is higher or if you are a viewer you use more what you see for understanding and for learning or if you are a reader but it's very important that all of this information should be synchronous otherwise it's a obstacle and makes your understanding more difficult this let's say everyone can member can identify can remember in one conference that you have participated and you have seen your powerpoint of the presenter going in one direction and the presentation going in another direction this is for very difficult for our for our students to understand according to these circumstances so we should use our voice we should use images good presentations non-verbal communication and strong images we should use as well texts very well organized very well systematized and pay attention we should use different semantics for different channels if we are speaking we don't use the same organization as we are if we are writing or if we are using images on our communication I should like now to ask the opinion of our experts about these subjects and I hope it will be very interesting and very helpful for you thank you very much